Today's demonstration is going to be on the use of Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2011's online lead capture functionality. So to begin, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sales area of our CRM online environment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to navigate down here a little ways under sales to the internet lead capture area. You'll see the interface which enables a particular user to create a number of different landing pages. View existing landing pages, view existing leads waiting to be processed, and the internet leads by month and the landing page performance. As you can see in this environment, we have done this a couple times and just for the purposes of testing and practice. So the first thing we're going to do for this example is we're going to create a brand new landing page. So to do that, under my landing pages area, I click on create a new landing page. The first screen we get to is called the create a landing page area. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a lead capture page. Now, we can also design our own forms, but this is pretty simple and basic functionality. So we're not really able to um, include any of our own you know, HTML code or anything quite that advanced. So, but we're not going to really focus on that today. What we're really going to focus in on is the really basic functionality behind just the basic create um, page area. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on the create page button. On the create landing page form, here what we can do is we can actually go in and we're going to start designing our page layout. Now, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to give this a name. I'm going to call this Summit Lead Capture. And as you can probably guess, that's going to become the URL to that page. As you can see, we have a few other options here as well. We have the ability to either choose Information Address and Form, Information Form, Information and Address, or Information Address and Map. But just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to go ahead and utilize the very first one. Now we can also select a page theme. Now here you can see we have a pretty basic number of themes we can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and choose Emerald Green, which is more in line with the Summer Group software brand. So I'll choose that and click on Next. On this next page, we're going to give it a title. So I'm going to give it something that's going to be somewhat intuitive, something that um, when the user sees it, it's going to you know, seems something that's all in line with what we're trying to accomplish here. There we go. And here I put some sort of a message. So make that very short and to the point. Now obviously you want to spend a little more time giving a little more succinct uh, descriptive message there potentially, but that'll suffice for now. Go ahead and put in our address, 1405, oops, 1405 Prairie Parkway, Suite A, West Fargo, North Dakota, 58078. And we'll leave all that as we have it there right now. Next, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select which fields I want to include. So for this one, we're going to keep this one pretty basic. I'm going to include the business phone, city, um, as well as email, first name, and that works for now. Now you can see that the order in which they appear over here in our selected uh, fields area is really dictated by the order in which I add them in. So from a logical standpoint though, it doesn't really make sense with how I would capture the information typically. So I want to move the first name above the last name to the second spot. As you can see, it bumps everything down. And I'm going to put the city, actually you know, I probably need address in there as well, don't I? So let me grab that. Street address 1 and state province and zip code. Those are all pretty darn important fields. Move the street address above the business phone. So I'll put that into the fourth spot. And move this up one and move our state up to the 6th spot and finally zip code up to the 7th spot. There we go. Now I can also browse out to our company logo. So here I'll just search for, there we go, 
and give it a button label. But let's click Submit here. And they'll go ahead and just have it browse out to our company website. And finally, click Next. Oop, forgot to enter a page title, so I'll call this Summer Group Software Information Gathering. There we go. I'll click Next. Next thing this little wizard is going to do for us is going to provide sort of a, a preview of what our window is going to look like. So you can see it looks like, a, like we would probably expect it to. Click on Finish. And now our page is available. Now as you can see here, Microsoft has actually given us some pretty good prescriptive guidance as far as our next step. But essentially what I want to do is test it out. So I'm going to go and click on Open in Browser. And it'll give us a, a peek at what this is going to look like. I'll put a company in here like Go Vikings. Right. Call him Mick Favre. There we go. And I'll just put some random other information in there. Yeah, that works for now. And I'll click Submit. What that's going to do then, of course, is going to direct it back to our company web page. But what's neat about this, minimize this, I can go back to my Internet Leads tab, and I'll see that I have a brand new lead tied to this particular marketing list. There it is. So I can click on the record, click Assign to Me, and then Assign. And what that's going to do, it's going to route it right into the system. Now, I could have assigned it to anybody, really, but I decided to assign it to myself. And now when I go to leads, we're going to see we have our new lead in the system of Brett McFarve. So that's a very brief demonstration of how we utilize the online lead marketing tool.